are actually, in living things, fundamentally two different kinds of cells. Everything that's alive is made of one kind of cell or another kind of cell. And I just want to give you some background about this. We call these two types of cells prokaryotes or prokaryotic cells and eukaryotes or eukaryotic cells, respectively. Now, prokaryotic cells are the things that sort of we've been talking about when we've been giving these arguments about the evolution of life on, or the origin of life on Earth. Um, and like those protocells, prokaryotic cells are enclosed by a single membrane. This is sometimes called the cell membrane simply. It's sometimes called the plasma membrane. This plasma membrane or cell membrane is primarily composed of a particular kind of organic molecule, lipids. These are the fats that we've talked about before. And we're going to talk more about lipids and cell membranes later in the course when that becomes relevant. The only thing we need to know about this lipid cell membrane for now is that its chemical properties provide a uniquely effective barrier for separating things in an aqueous, in a watery environment. Because water doesn't pass through it very well. And so it's particularly good for keeping molecules inside and outside separated. So what are prokaryotic cells today? I mean, we've gone beyond the, the tide pools of the early Earth. Well, prokaryotic cells today are the things that we commonly refer to as bacteria. All prokaryotic cells are single-celled organisms. Sometimes they occur in large masses, large mats, for example, but even then, each prokaryotic cell is its own separate individual, single-celled individual that reproduces on its own. There are some other structures, too. I mean, I don't want to run prokaryotes down. I mean, I have to point out that if you look at a prokaryote in detail, you see some other kinds of structures in there. I mean, some prokaryotes will have very long tails on them called flagella uh, that allow them to move around. Some prokaryotes will have some infoldings. But by and large, prokaryotes represent a single package. Now, this doesn't mean that prokaryotes are somehow losers in any way. In fact, prokaryotes, in spite of this structural simplicity, are actually some of the most um, successful organisms that have ever existed on the planet and that exist today. Prokaryotes occupy a wider range of environments. They span a broader range of biochemistries than any other group of organisms. And they're extremely abundant. Prokaryotes are everywhere. For example, the number of a particular kind of prokaryote called E. coli Escheria coli that lives in the guts of humans, for example, the number that live in a single human's gut exceeds the total number of humans that has ever lived on the planet. So it's not like prokaryotes should be ignored just because they're simple. Nonetheless, we're talking about packages, and this leads us to the other main kind of cell, the eukaryotic cell. These are structurally much, much more complex. Everything other than bacteria that lives including anything we might want to call a plant, an animal, a fungus, is composed of eukaryotic cells. Now, there are a number of organisms, protists, that are single-celled eukaryotes. So it isn't that eukaryotic cells are necessarily multicellular. They can be single-celled. But all multicellular organisms, such as ourselves or birds or trees, all of those are uh, composed of eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells are primarily characterized by the fact that they are not only a package themselves, but they have inside them a very complex internal set of compartments or smaller sub-packages within, each separated from the different parts of the cell by its own additional lipid membrane. Now, the internal packages or compartments of a eukaryotic cell are something that we could spend a lot of time listing. We could memorize those details. But what I want to do is to broad, broad, or draw this more broadly out to point out that there are really three main types of internal packages that we find in eukaryotic cells. Let me list those three main types for you and then go through them in turn. There are some internal packages that are specifically devoted to the problem of information storage and processing, one in particular that we'll talk about in a second. There are some of those internal packages that are specifically devoted to the problem of processing and storing energy. And then there's a third set of, uh, of uh, internal structures that are devoted to the problem of transporting 
and packaging biochemical products and reactions. That third set, by the way, I'll just tell you, is commonly called the endomembrane system, and we're going to talk about that last. Well, let's talk about information processing. The organelle that is, oh, and I should say, I mean, I should define that term, I'm sorry. We call these internal packages in eukaryotic cells organelles, um, sort of by analogy to the organs in an organism, the little pieces that function independently in eukaryotic cell, we'll call organelles. So the organelle that most uh, is most associated with information processing in a eukaryotic cell is what we call the nucleus. In fact, it's the presence of a nucleus that gave rise to the name eukaryotic cells. The carrion, um, which is from the Greek root for nut, was the name given by early microscopists when they were first describing cells to a large dark element that they always found in the center of this particular kind of cell. And that large dark element is this huge uh, piece called the nucleus. So eukaryotic means essentially having a true nucleus, and the prokaryotes are cells that don't have a nucleus. 